Now, I had someone make a really good point about the wiring. Um, I was using the seven way to test it back here. I have one brake hooked up right now. I just have them twisted together because I had to go get my soldering iron batteries. Now, I am running one of these in the bed, which is the correct way to do it. You need to run one of these in the bed. DOT is gonna hound you about it because you're running the wiring over the tailgate into the back. But I tested that wiring off of the one in the back. Now I've pulled other goosenecks with this and it was fine, but it doesn't hurt to check it. So I only have one hooked up right now. Like I said, it's the far back one. So I am going to plug this in back here and I'm gonna see if it gives me a short code. Now, if it doesn't, I'm gonna solder the backs. So that way they're done. Then we'll start adding individual axles. For anybody that missed yesterday's video, still don't know what's going on with this tire. I'm gonna check this today and see if it's just the angle that it's stuck. It looks like, yeah, it looks like it might be shoved under a little bit. Cause this one's on ice. So this one probably slid, this one's on solid. So I feel like this axle just kind of like slid and it's like under itself right now. So wiring, I got it all ran. Um, and then I have the back one, like I said, all tied together. Just, you know, just finger tied. I didn't wrap anything yet. It's just kind of like an ugly, just wanted to test it and see if it's gonna work. And then all that runs to this one. Then I have the cross wire over here and then I'm gonna connect each individual wire on this side. So I don't have to have a mix of wires on the other side. So we'll see how that comes out. Just wanna make sure that we have fully functioning, perfect brakes, because again, I'm gonna mention it. I have like perfect inspections. I have level one inspections that I have not failed. And every one of you guys tell me you're scared of North Carolina because they pick on hot shots. And that's exactly where all of my level ones have passed. I got, I think it was one in either Virginia or West Virginia I passed, but I got, you know, an inspection in, I've got many inspections in North Carolina passed every single one of them. So anybody that talks smack on, you know, you, you know, your equipment's dangerous. You need to do maintenance. The inspections don't lie, especially North Carolina where they're out to get blood. So I wanna continue that. Liam, can you do me a favor and plug that harness into that plug right there? I don't know if I need to roll it forward when I test it. I really don't wanna hook up to the trailer if I don't have to, but I am gonna, I may try to. So Liam, that part goes up, up. Plug that all the way in, there you go. Now let's make sure that can come down on it. Push in a little bit more. There you go, perfect. Cool, so let's see if forget your name but someone mentioned it and we have you guys can see goes all the way to 120 we're on level three on the gain the initial gain so Liam do me a favor come here sit in the driver's seat I, know. I need you to squeeze this yeah squeeze that squeeze that I want to listen and see if it if I can hear the magnet just go on and off just do a sweeping motion turn it on turn it off keep doing it I heard something. I don't know what he's doing. I'm gonna verify what he's doing before I say anything. Liam, that, no, not that. Hold on. Leave that on one, go like this. Oh, I know it. But this needs to be all the way up. There you go. Go like that, on, off. Just keep doing that. All right, let's see how these things, just go on, off. Okay, I can hear. Let's check the other side. I can hear it doing something. You guys can hear that. It's hard to tell. I think it's only coming from this side. Let's see. Ugh, tripping over my ramps. All right, so just to verify, I unplugged that one because I was hearing that one really, really loud. Or one of them I was hearing really loud and I couldn't tell which one was which, so I just unhooked that one. And then this one only makes noise now. Obviously, it's the only one hooked up. So that tells me that they both are working because this one was really, really loud, or this one was really, really loud and then this one was a little quieter. So that tells me that they're both doing their thing. Now these back four are brand new brakes. So I'm gonna go grab the soldering iron. At some point I wanna adjust the brakes again. Um, obviously I won't do it today, but I think I'm gonna put each axle up in the air and see if I can get them to all brake, just to see if I can't get them to do, you know, go into their short circuit mode. 
I don't see any fuel under there. So that I will. I did go and clean the engine bay out a little bit this morning, so I went and sprayed it off. But yeah, so let's break the soldering iron out. All right, so I got everything soldered, you can see. So this is where the wire is going to come in at. It'll cross over to this side. Then, since there's already a bunch of wires connected in, obviously there's the two that come out, um, there's the two from this, and then there's also the cross tube. So there's three sets of wires on each one, so there's six total. So over here, there's only two. One coming out, one coming in. So that's why I'm gonna use this joint here to then link to that break, and then go to this one, and then go to that one, and then go to that one. That way I don't have a bunch of wires on each one. Like this one has three, uh, different wires coming in this one has two obviously the crossbar and the wire from the brakes they're soldered together so we'll have three on this one and then just keep going i have the wiring up there that we're going to use um i'm reusing the wiring that was already on here i'm just obviously testing and seeing how how it is um before making anything complete so it's just do it one at a time be patient if we find any wires that were issues then obviously we'll go ahead and replace that but for what i have right now um, i'm gonna reuse what i can and if there's spots that i can't reuse or there's a certain break that's bad then we'll we'll target that as we find it he's over there he thinks i can't hear him playing with the the brake controller i'm like you can hear the brakes activating boy oh someone made a good comment by the way um and i want to give you guys some advice on this okay so when you're backing up the trailer or pulling your truck ahead or whatever um always know where your your kids or anybody that's around you is at someone may mention this and this is a good point and this is a rule that i have never back your trailer up until you know that until you can physically see where everyone that is around you until you can physically see them like liam i won't back the trailer up unless i can physically see where he's at if i can see him on the left side of the trailer i'll back the trailer up if he's on the other side and i can't see him and he's trying to guide me i will not back that trailer up even an inch because sometimes that's all it takes and you run over your kid or you run over somebody and it's not a good time. So always make sure you know where your, your kids or anybody around you is at before you start backing up a trailer. It is, it's really crucial or even pulling a trailer out for instance. Don't pull out until you know where everyone's at. So I think I can see why and I didn't notice this at first but I think I can see why we were having our short problems. You guys can see there's bare wire right there and bare wire right there. So I'm gonna take the time real quick to actually seal this um, because the wiring's not bad, it's just exposed on here. So I'm gonna take the time, make sure that I seal that uh, so that we don't have any issues. Obviously still checking for shorts as we go along, but I'm pretty sure people were correct with the cross wires. These sit on the bottom of these tubes and as they jump up and down, that's why you get a short. So that would explain where my overload comes from. So like I said, I'm gonna seal these up. That's pretty much gonna be that. Now, obviously, like if I ever go to do the brakes again, there, there can be a time where I may actually end up just rewiring the trailer, but don't fix what isn't broken. This is definitely fixable. There's no like wires missing or anything. It's just obviously like, it was probably touching the bottom of this tube. So let's get that fixed and um, keep going. So I left this side exposed. I'm gonna tape up the other side, throw some heat shrink over it, and we'll go from there. All right, so this is another wire that I had actually pulled out of the center tube. So, guys, if you ever have a short come up, yeah, a lot of times it is the magnets, okay? I will admit that. A lot of times it was the magnets. They did work for a little while there, and then they didn't. So this is the second wire that's coming through. So this wire was good. So this is a connecting wire. I gotta pull out the wire for that tube as well. Gee, I wonder why I've been having problems with brake controllers, that's ridiculous. I'll cut, salvage what I can, make sure it's done as right as possible, sealed up so water can't get to it. But like this tube is done. A lot of times they just wrap electrical tape on both sides, that's how um, Fleet Pride did it. So if they're gonna do it that way, certainly I can too. So I'm gonna get this mounted to that brake there. We'll run a wire. I'm gonna try to see if this is salvageable. I'll clean it up and see if it is salvageable and sealable. Um, if it is, we'll use it. If not, I'll uh, certainly go get more. I do have more wiring if needed, but I've never, I'm not really a fan of these. Um, you guys can let me know, like, is there, I don't know, I, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like that, but I mean, I see why it makes sense, but let me know what you guys think of those connections because they're not my favorite thing in the world. So let's cut, solder. We'll get this side first, make my, cross tube over to the other side, but that makes a lot of sense as to where my issue is coming from. Also, Fleet Pride installed that 
and that thing is rusty as hell already. So it's like, I just, you guys, you guys know my thoughts on them at this point. I spent way too much money to have them do some work on my trailer and I just, I, I regret every second of it. Those tire mounts came out like garbage. One was like three or four inches lower than the other. So at some point I'm probably just gonna end up cutting both them off. I'm a local driver now, so I'll probably just end up, like someone else said, I'll probably just end up putting a tire mount in the belly of the trailer, what I should have done originally, but I wanted both those tires, and I liked the look of them being up there. I don't recommend it. That's that's rusty as hell. They, they couldn't paint it. I think I spent like 1,900 bucks for all that work. 600 of it was to weld some threaded rod into the trailer, so it's, yeah, I don't know. I'm not happy with the service, and I just, it's one of those, just gonna chalk it up, suck it up and I paid the money I'm not gonna go there anymore unless uh, the only way I'm gonna go there is for inspections so this side's done we got this one rewrapped over here so we've already verified so we do have four back brakes and we verified that there's no short up there I was gonna sit and do the like test them one-on-one -on -one method and then I realized that that cross tube all those wires were pretty messed up I'm gonna pull this one out and we're gonna see if the first one has any breaks in it and if it does, then we'll reseal the wire. If these wires were like super corroded and whatnot, I would absolutely be replacing them, but the wires themselves actually look really good under the insulation, so just rewrap them, send it down the road. I've been fighting these electrical issues since I bought this trailer. I think they started probably like a week or two in, and I started noticing it. And it's like, the brakes would work. Sometimes they'd be intermittent, but like I've always driven with this trailer. I've always been careful with my braking. I don't uh, put myself in situations where I need to lock up the brakes or slam the brakes, but the truck's always been able to stop it, so I didn't worry about it. But now we're at the point where it's like, it, it, I don't know, it's just super annoying at this point. And we need to get it through inspection. It passed inspection last year, barely. So, well, I mean, I keep thinking I need to get this thing through inspection, actually. The, the trailer just got inspected. The truck itself needs inspected. So that's kind of annoying, which the trailer, the truck will pass. I just need to get the front main done, which should be this coming up weekend. And that air filter that'll be here on Wednesday. So we'll have an air filter as of Wednesday for the guys complaining. But there's been a lot of people that said, oh, it's not gonna last long without an air filter. And I mean, you're probably right, but I've been driving it around now for what, like a month and a half without an air filter. And I've driven through some pretty harsh rainstorms when it's snowing. Um, and, it just it just does it. I don't know if this motor and turbo are like specifically like just out of this world super freaking powerful. I, I don't even know. Super reliable. I don't whatever you want to say. But this engine, as much of a pain it is with these oil leaks, it just does whatever I ask it to. Minus the oil leaks aside. So it's annoying, but it's like I cannot kill this motor. Like the day that I kill this motor, I'm gonna be like, okay, this is how it finally died. I have put that motor through hell. Literally, like 17, 1800 degrees EGTs every day. Every day I'm towing with it, I have no pyrometer, and I'll floor it up the up mountains for about at least 10, 15 seconds, and then I'll start to back out of it just to be safe but then I'll back out of it. It just does it. The, the turbo had problems long before I even put it on the truck, so nothing I did to it. I mean, it may have enhanced it getting going bad, but it still spools great and does all that. So you can see it chilling over there. It's just one of those, we took it off of a truck because we suspected it to be bad, and then we're like, well, let's give it a second life. So I will absolutely be rebuilding it here in the near future. Once the front main is fixed and there's an air filter on it, then I'll go ahead and rebuild it because then I'm gonna have to replace the air filter again anyway and they recommend you do an oil change and a air filter when you do a turbo replacement. All right, so I got this one wired up and then this is the last cross wire, the one for this one. These are Lippert axles, so I really think they need to get their stuff together with insulating these wires better. There's no way to really diagnose it without rewiring it, so that's kind of ridiculous. This is the one that actually looks really nice. There's no issues with this one. So that's why it, it makes sense that when I cut this one, the two axles, those two were shorting out, so this was the only one actually trying to do anything, so that makes a lot of sense. Now I gotta check that tire over there. I'm gonna make sure that one's full. Um, Cause you can see it's bulging this way, so that tire is getting beaten by the fact that like these, when they slid, they slid on ice. That one, I kind of jackknifed this trailer at a 90 degree and that one wasn't on ice, but that one was. All right, so everything is rewired. We are all good. I ran out of tape at the end there, so I need to go grab some to wrap the last one, but 
it is functioning it is drivable it is legal it is inspection passable that's all that matters do you need to check i think the other light went out it, because of a joint so i'm going to resolder the other side while i'm out here um if you guys want if you guys are into milwaukee tools these soldering irons absolutely insane they just work if you throw a battery in it if you keep an inverter in your truck you can always have them charging they get plenty hot and i cooled this one down no i don't know how hot it gets to tell you the truth i don't think it'll actually tell you how hot it gets but it, it's definitely very good it's very fast it's faster than the electric ones i've used so that's a good sign it's really good we'll turn the lights on i want to go around the trailer check all the lights this one i need to pull out and put in better so i'm gonna do that that one's in that one works uh this one works i think i had a tail light that was going out for wiring not uh so these two work this one if i press on it it works oh, let's see something uh, there we go so that one works uh, and then this one over here if i wiggle the wiring look at that so there's an issue aha uh -huh, right there so that that needs regrounded so i gotta do that yet this is what salt will do to these trailers so we'll fix that and then all the rest of these lights work check I win. this guy up here works okay I turn the four ways on make sure we have turn signals and and whatnot and do we have working four ways we do so pretty soon that won't have a mississippi tag it'll i don't know what do you guys think should i register this trailer in maine or should i register it in pennsylvania all right so the tire is the last thing we're going to check today again i don't know if it's low or not i'm just going to test it we're going to get the milwaukee out if i kick it It, it definitely it feels low so i think i'm gonna get some next week uh if it wasn't for this massive payment coming up in february i'd have already bought new tires for it we don't need front brakes now because everything works so i would have bought tires for it and i had to make that payment we do so there's nothing i can do about it so there's that and then we have a six thousand dollar payment coming up the following month so february 1st i gotta pay twelve thousand and then march 1st i gotta pay six thousand so for something completely unrelated so i want to get that paid off um trailer i owe 20 i owe 2850 dollars on the trailer which means it'll be paid off in less than 12 weeks so three months from today so this will be paid off which is three uh, 2850 so minus six thousand minus twelve thousand so eighteen thousand plus thirty one hundred so the next three months i'll have oh what is that that's uh twenty one thousand dollars worth of debt paid off that means i only have to do seventeen thousand dollars more by the end of the year by I, October, I want to be debt free, so it's it's coming pretty good. Oh yeah, super debt, uh, super flat. So yeah, it looks like I I'm not gonna want to deal with this for much longer. So I think a set of tires will be around like 500 bucks, maybe a little less. But I don't know. Do you guys also balance your trailer tires because there's weights on these, and for the most part, I don't really think I've seen people actually weight their or balance their tires on the trailer. So let me know on that as well. I'm ready to get this thing dropped. I'll do that tomorrow. First thing in the morning, I'm gonna leave the house around four tomorrow, which will let me get there right around eight. I should be good on fuel. And then I gotta pick up another one in the Mannheim area, or Mannheim Auto Auction is where we're picking another one up. So we'll do that. Should be a relatively simple day tomorrow. And then I definitely need to book a load for tomorrow, going to West Virginia. They're coming from West Virginia back over so we'll see i also i'm gonna probably take off friday this week because i have to go and actually physically pay that amount of money um i gotta write him a check out friday for i think it's just just a little over twelve thousand. so we'll pay that and it should be good luckily that is a tax write-off oh yeah we hit something you guys can hear back here 
that's on the sidewall too so yeah I'm, I'm gonna try to get this i'm gonna call tomorrow and get a quote on getting a tire i'll just have to fill it up tomorrow in the morning sucks but nothing i can really do right now it's sunday but yeah so we'll just get a quote on it um whether i can afford to swing it or not i mean i'm gonna need i'm tired of dealing with the flat so we only need uh two one more set of tires and then we're pretty good you can hear it oh it's leaking pretty good So, whatever. What are you doing? That's the tools right here. Here, Liam, watch this. Scary. All right, grab some tools. I'm gonna throw a battery in this. It's nice because I can go home. Since I'm home every day, I don't gotta carry an inverter. Just charge all my batteries when I go home. Take them with me in the morning. Super convenient. So tomorrow's gonna be a good day going out because everything will work and we don't have a fuel leak in the truck anymore so we should get better fuel mileage this thing will be a lot easier to stop so this thing has really good brakes because it's been able to stop this trailer without anything for the longest time because it's always been intermittent and i've even i, I didn't want to pay fleet pride to go through and do it but i paid them an hour worth of labor to like start looking at it and honestly look at the wires in your cross tubes it's one of those that really doesn't hurt to check it out but if you're gonna pull the wire through, make sure that you have a wire coming back through so that you'll be able to feed it through again. Because if not, then you're gonna be wrapping them on the outside, which I'd prefer them be on the outside anyway so I can see them. Those wires that are in that tube, you can't physically see it. And they put those wires in there before they uh, weld the hubs on. So same with running the wiring down the whole side of the trailer. It would have been damn near impossible for me to get that the whole way through. I didn't think about it that way. Yeah, I, I kind of I just kind of dropped the ball on that one, screwed that up, but whatever. So all my wires are on the outside. You can actually physically see them. If there's any shorts, it's easier to diagnose. This tire's getting down there too, but still legal. So barely, but it is legal. But yeah, all my lights work now, my brakes work and we just need two tires. And then the trailer is 100%. We'll see how long that lasts though, because obviously these trailers, like they weren't physically made to run like this. They were not made for hot shot. And that's a lot of the things that I kind of want to stress because I keep getting, you know, I get a lot of questions on wanting, people want to start, this is their dream job, they're excited to do it. And unfortunately this equipment just was not made to do this. Like I like the truck that I own, but Unfortunately, like as much money as I can throw into it or as much time as I can throw into it, it wasn't made to do it. Even these new trucks, they weren't made to do this. Yeah, you can get away with it. There's a lot of guys that are successful out here doing this. But the majority of new people that get into this, you'll buy a trailer like this. These are 7K axles. These are glorified camper axles. That's all they are. They were made to go from one spot where you're sitting to the next and sit for a little while. They were not made to run five to 700 miles a day pulling stuff like this. Yes, it's rated for 21,000 pounds and I have it derated to 17, but it just, it physically was not made to run that hard. Now there are, you know, there are other trailers that are made to do that. You know, you got 8K and up axles, you know, 10K axles, and there are some sizes bigger than, I don't know, each individual size and whatnot, but they are, um, those are more made for it, but these non-CDL setups, like this is a non-CDL setup right here. Do I recommend non-CDL? I, I personally, I, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of non-CDL. I'm with it, like I am running that right now, but I'm with a lot of other people's opinions on it as I've started driving and I've kind of like gotten more into the professional aspect of it. I really think that it is crazy that they let people with a normal driver's license drive these commercial vehicles. 26,000 pounds is a lot of weight for something like this. You know, I get, you know, if you had a semi and it was rated at 26,000, no, it's not a lot of weight. But you get something like this doing 26,000, that is a lot of weight for it. It just, it wasn't made to do it all the time. I feel like you should have your CDL for it. You should have a commercial driver's license. You should learn the business uh, correctly. You know, we all start somewhere. I'm not gonna say that I started off perfect, but again, we all start somewhere. But back to one of my points, these these things were not made to do this. A lot of guys that I see get into this business, and I'm gonna stress this, to you guys that wanna rush and get into this business, do not do that. Do your due diligence, do some research. Don't just watch YouTube videos. Yes, watch as many YouTube videos as you can from like anybody, like get what they're doing. 
but also learn to filter through the bullshit that they're going to give you because a lot of times you only see the positive. I try to show you guys the negative and what really goes on behind the scenes. Most guys aren't gonna tell you they've dumped thousands of dollars into their equipment or they've spent, they're gonna try to tell you that they're making thousands of dollars a week and they're doing really good. And it's like, yeah, you know, I'm doing well, but every weekend I'm out here working. You know, I'm working, getting this back up to par, getting this back up to par. It's like every weekend I use to do my maintenance. So my point, guys get into this industry brand new. They go out and spend, you know, you either get a used setup that's already paid off or you go and get, you know, what do you say? Like, what's a truck now? Like seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. You go and buy that. You go and buy a trailer for ten dollars to $20,000. You haven't made a dime yet. Now you're in all this debt. And it's like, you're supposed to be able to make a thousand bucks a day. You know, that's what they'll tell you. I, I do roughly, like my goal is 4,000 gross a week, but that's gross. Right now, fuel prices are up. 1,200 bucks a week in fuel. You know, you got your insurance payment. Yes, my insurance is super cheap. It's like $363 a month, which is absolutely insanely cheap. So that's not a big deal. But if I throw a thousand dollar payment on that, that's two full days of work, trailer payment, you know, it all adds up. So these guys, a lot of times I see it. I see it personally, and I even linked a video. This dude did a really good video. I linked it in my community tab. Hotshot Trucking is for suckers. Go check that video out because he breaks down a lot of the BS that goes on. And a lot of guys get in this business because they think it's easy. It's not, I can tell you that now. Guys will go out and spend that money on equipment. Two, in between, I'd say 30 days and six months, they're selling that equipment. They just, they can't run, they can't afford to run. Brokers are taking advantage of you, you're running cheap rates. You're not making the money that you were promised. So it's one of those things, that's why I tell people, you know, go do as much research as possible before you come out here because it is not rainbows and kittens like everybody makes it sound. Like you get some real aspect to it watching me. There is a lot of drama into it. None of it is staged, this is all real. And you get to see the drama that goes into it. Yes, it's great for views, I'll admit that, but at the same time, this is what I deal with. Imagine what you're gonna have to deal with it. If you're not mechanically inclined, a used truck is completely off the table because you're gonna be dumping a lot of money into it. And then if you have a new truck, parts availability is a huge problem with new trucks. So CP4 failures, these trucks, they finally went back to the CP3. They're having parts issues. You can't get parts for some of these new trucks for the longest period of time. So it's ridiculous. There's a lot of pros and cons to this. I could rant about this for hours. If you sat down with me and we had a full conversation, we could talk for hours about the, every negative that goes on in this business. But to some people, it is worth it. It is worth it to me. A lot of other people don't feel that way though. It's not worth it to them. They'll get into it and then within a month to six months, they're selling. It's not worth it to them. The reason I run this, I want to stay as cheap as possible. I wanna stay out of debt. I like the low overhead, you know, all that stuff. I can be home every day. I can transport three of my kids and my fiance around in this truck, no issues. And it just does what it needs to do. That's, that's why I do it. I don't want a semi, I don't need a semi. It just, for me, it does not make sense. This is not, I, I'm, I'm big into the investment market, which is why I like keeping my overhead low. I'm trying to dump as much money into whatever I can. Real estate is something I'm going to be investing in in the future. Maybe a storage lot for, you know, it's just anything that I can do that makes that passive income. That's why I do it. That's why a semi doesn't make sense to me. I do plan on getting my own authority. I do plan on running a trucking company. There is so many big, I'm only 27 years old. So there is so many plans that I have in the future. You know, the next 10 years, I'll be, I'll be 30 in three years. Um, the next 10 years go by, I'll be 37 years old. A lot can happen in 10 years. You know, I could build a successful trucking company. I can go get real estate. I can go get land. There's so many things I can do that I'll be debt free this year and fixing my credit. There is so many things that I can be doing. So it's just one of those things you gotta be patient and just work for it. Figure out what works for you and just do it. And my end goal is to set them up. I got three kids. My end goal is to set them up. I'm not gonna get rich doing this, obviously. I like doing it. It's a great stepping stone. Do I ever plan on stopping? Probably not, because I like to haul stuff, but not a get rich thing. I, I plan on getting rich. At some point, I don't care what it is, I plan on getting rich. I plan on investing my money because rich people don't work for money. Rich people use their money to work for their money. So that's my logic, but people will probably think I'm crazy. 
every rich person out there was pretty much told that they're crazy that's not going to work and now look at them they're rich so that's my logic hope you guys enjoyed take this with a grain of salt make sure you do your due diligence go check that video out i linked and uh go check out in the description by the way end the video here go check out the description i got my affiliate links for amazon i got celsius.network if you want to get paid seven percent or you know whatever your yield percentage per week you get weekly payments using celsius keeping your bitcoin your your stocks in there um the american dollar unfortunately is pretty dead compared to what it used to be uh since i think it was 1970 the american dollar is down 98 percent it, it's a shame it really is so between that that's why i invest in the way that i do in bitcoin and ethereum and all that uh same with uh you know i got my coinbase down there i got mud flap code in the description and a couple other things. If you wanna get with me, ask me some questions, feel free to send me an email down in the description, send me a message on Instagram, all that stuff. Appreciate you guys, see you in the next video. Do what you can, enjoy your life, appreciate you, peace.